I'm a little bit more broken than I than I uh, think I am at times, which is uh, a bit of a tough one to swallow at times. Undistracted by news. Yeah, they're all stressed because all their feathers are falling off. 11-year-old Kai has his mind on the farm egg supply. And he's having a great time because he's not getting as many distractions. Come on, ladies. Kai is growing up so quickly, and I feel like because of work and other commitments, not spending as much quality family time as I should be. So that's been great to be home every evening with the kids. <laughs> work is stressful, it's hard, and put COVID on top of that, it's even, it's even harder. Back home, Andrew is head of nursing across three NHS hospitals. The pandemic for me has been a really challenging time. More so, I've been worried about the health and the well-being of all the people I, I work with. Have you put your sprinklies on it? Yeah. Merry baby, so proud. Mm. Over you go. That's it. Well done. Husband Gary, now an NHS nurse, retired from the army five years ago. The most difficult tours were, were Iraq and then subsequently the three tours that I did to Afghanistan. It's uh, those uh, memories that will probably stay with me the longest. On all the tours, I was working in the operating theatre. Um, I started to show signs of PTSD, which did really, really affect me badly. I do have to be careful of the situations I put myself in, hence why my career choice has changed. But while the kids are thriving on the farm, it's a struggle for Gary. There's an element on me to childcare and cooking, juggle that with helping out round the farm as it's required. I just haven't, I haven't got the fitness levels for it anymore, sadly. I'm a little bit more broken than I, than I uh, think I am at times, which is uh, a bit of a tough one to swallow at times. The effects on their state of mind are being regularly monitored throughout the experiment. I think I've forgotten how to use technology. After six weeks, there are measurable changes, with the majority of adults showing significant improvements in happiness, community bonds and quality of sleep. But Iraq veteran Gary is going against the trend. I am a private person. I, um not wanting always to be surrounded by people and engaging with people, quite honestly. Not that good at the moment. I'm veering rapidly between being manic one minute and very down the next minute. And trying to maintain that sort of buoyancy and chipper out exterior is taking its toll on me internally. What's going on here? The next morning, an emergency meeting. It is with sadness and regret that I just need to tell you that um, Gary and Andrew and Kai and Tommy decided to leave last night. They decided it were in um, Gary's best interest for his health. And from a personal point of view, I've got to say for me and Darren, he's pretty devastated. I do know they're at home and that they're both well. Okay, thanks. Well done, What would I be doing at home? I've had a lie in, probably nursing a hangover. I think I'd rather be doing this, to be honest. Definitely. Yeah, good, good on your mind. For 21 year old Jacob, a simpler life has meant time to reflect. The mental side of this is invaluable yeah. to me. I wasn't right before I came in here. I thought it was all right, but struggled with a lot of stuff. It was a lot of that Alex? Yeah, 100%. Alex was 19 when he passed away, and I was 20, yeah. Yeah, so young. Alex, he was my best mate. He was funny, outgoing, would light up a room. He was the best person, you know, there's not many people you meet like that. I think I'm about 14 there, about 14, but look about 12. I think with his kind of cancer, it was always, it, it reacted well to treatment. It, go, it went away quite well, 
but then it came back just as quickly. That was for his make-a-wish that we did. Obviously got Ben Howard, Alex and me. I had to get used to pushing the wheelchair, I wasn't very good. I was there when he had his first set of chemo, so I, I, I was trying to be there as much as I could, just ha happy I could. I could be there literally to the end, you know, till the night before I was there at the hospice, so, yeah. You don't get over it, it doesn't just go away. But I feel like I've got a lot better ways of dealing with it. But you've come a long way, haven't you, Jacob? Yeah, definitely. You've come a heck of a long way. <sighs> I think it's just the people here that have made the difference in me moving forward. Starts to get over a bit of grief. I feel a new burst of energy. Life's exciting. Time flies when you're siding. Time flies when you're siding, as the old saying goes. I'd, I'd go back. I'd definitely go back to the farm. I'd definitely in a go In back. a heartbeat, I'd yeah. go back to the farm. Life's been good since leaving the farm. It's been different, though, to how I expected it to be, you know, coming out. It's been amazing seeing mum and dad and being back at, you know, back at home and being back with my family. But it's, you know, it's been hard in some ways as well. I've struggled with going from having a purpose every single day to coming home, you know, I've not got a job, and it's, you know, you feel like you're a bit useless, maybe, compared to how we were there. My time on the farm has definitely helped me cope with grief and help me try and live alongside it rather than letting it rule my life, I suppose. We all learn more there about ourselves than I have done in my 21 years. We'll all look at life as, that was the life before we were on the farm, and then this is your life afterwards. I think it gave me a real excitement for life. It was a different kind of happiness on the farm. It was a, it was a more pure, simple kind of happiness, and I think, that was really sort of joyful and that's something that I want to continue in my life and I'm going to put the effort in to do so.